bloom and grow YouTube show. But as a gardener who might be going through their first couple of seasons of gardening, what are things that when you do first start to feel those first, you know, cool snaps, um, God, we just had such a heat wave and we're experiencing cool weather again. And it's mm -hmm. been such a dream. Yeah. What are, what are the things that should be going through gardeners heads, you know, in this time? So grow what you like to eat the most. Uh, we're assuming we're talking about vegetables mm -hmm. and, um, start easy, you know, start with lettuce and kale and spinach. Well, spinach isn't the easiest thing to get started from seed unless you, there's some tricks there. So we'll stick with lettuce and kale and, you know, beets and radishes and there's not very demanding plants in the, in the fall. And so, um, and, and you can plant them directly into the soil outside. You don't have to start them inside. So you don't need any fancy equipment. Um, but I, like lettuce is probably about the easiest thing that you can sow. Cause you can literally sprinkle it on top of the soil surface. It likes to have light to germinate. So you don't even need to cover it up. Yeah. And probably in about two days, it, it starts to germinate. And you can continue to do that for weeks after that and have a succession of fresh cut and come again lettuce that you can put into your salads or do whatever you want with. And there's a lot of those fall or cool season crops that you can do that with. So um, don't overthink it, I think, is my is what I would say. And even and with leafy crops, you know, a lot not everybody has a full sun environment to grow their plants. But with leafy crops, you're not producing a big fat tomato or a big pepper or an eggplant that it fruits, you know, it's just the leaf that you're taking from it. So you can get by with, um, you know, partial shade or not direct sun. And that makes, that just opens up your possibilities so much more. Yeah. I feel like that's why a lot of apartment farmers find success with growing, you know, mm -hmm. those microgreens and lettuces on their windowsills because they are a little bit more low light tolerant. Um, Let's talk about lettuce for a minute. Cause I do, feel right. like everybody says lettuce is easy, but I feel like, so say I have a packet of lettuce seeds and I have my little grow bag. Yeah. I sprinkle the lettuce seeds all over. Cause I've actually only grown lettuce from plugs like that I buy at the store, but yeah. I don't love that. I don't know if they're organically started. And I feel like lettuce is one of those. You want a truly organic lettuce leaf to eat. Um, when you sprinkle the seeds over a, hold on one second. Mm -hmm. um, I just remembered another question and I'm going to forget it if I didn't write it down. Mm -hmm. So you sprinkle the seeds over some soil. Are you covering the, the lettuce with more soil, the seeds with more soil, or are you just exposing them to the sun to help trigger that germination? The latter typically, but okay. it's, it's kind of counterintuitive for people to think that they don't need to cover it up a little bit. You know, we think when we plant something, we, covered up mm -hmm. but with lettuce um it's called positively photoblastic mm -hmm. <laughs> which is a term <laughs> that applies to the fact that it's a plant that actually positive means it needs light to germinate and if it's yeah. negatively photoblastic it won't germinate in the presence of light mm -hmm. so lettuce is positively photoblastic and so leaving it exposed actually helps lettuce sprout even faster. Why do I feel like that's something that like Austin Powers would say? <laughs> Photo plastic. My yeah. snapdragons too. Snapdragons you have to seeds you have to leave out. Um yeah. so once you you cover it and they all germinate, then do, when do you go in and thin the lettuce germination? That's up to you. You know, you could do it it I mean the thing about leaf lettuce especially is you can you can have it pretty densely planted and it's going to it, they're going to come up as they come up and find their way and make room. And, you know, it might be a little bit crowded, but you're going to come in there ideally and, and snip away either the outer edges of those plants or give them a haircut. And that's your salad for the day. And then it's going to grow up new, new leaves on the rosette. But, um, you know, I like to give a little bit of space between my plants. So once I know which of the ones close to each other that I want to keep mm -hmm. the other ones, if I'm going to pull them out, they go. But even, even with the decades of experience that I have thinning, which is pulling them out, perfectly good looking, healthy plants and putting them in the compost pile, or hopefully you just take them in and eat them. And, you know, even the little microgreens, I mean, mm -hmm. you can eat those too. Why not? But, um, it's still mentally a hard thing to do. It hurts so bad. Yeah. Man. This, this year I, I was so itchy at the end of this winter 
our, I live in a microclimate up here, so I couldn't put anything in the ground before June 1st. And so I started seeds indoors because I was so like, I just needed to watch yeah. something sprout, <laughs> but I started so much. I started way too many zinnia. I started way, I had so much sweet alyssum. Um, mm. I had, so, I mean, I had way too many seeds because I wouldn't thin them. Cause it was really more of an emotional experience than like actually needing them to transplant. Um, yeah. but it was hysterical. I was giving that, I was giving them away to everyone. I was like, who, who needs plants, please. Like, please take some of these plants. I went totally crazy. Um, that's not a bad thing. Do, giving yeah, away plants. Do, 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 do